knows? I had a little issue there with trying to share a screen through Facebook Live, but I think I'm there now. Um, I wanted to share with you this um, idea about what's happening when you have your after work overeating urges. Um, but also what I'm about to tell you today is absolutely applicable to any habit that you are experiencing because I'm going to show you how a habit is constructed, what the chain of events is inside a habit, any habit. And we're going to use the example of overeating, but you can apply you feel a little bit, that little bit compulsive about it, a little bit like it's happening against my better judgment. Okay, and most of the important here, let's look at the role of urges in all of this. Because if we could deal with our urges, guys, to do these things, um, if we didn't feel controlled by the, compelled by the urges, then we'd be golden, wouldn't we? So when you're overeating situation, it's actually the eating that's bothering you. And all of your energy is going into, well, how do I stop? How do I stop, you know, eating the whole sleeve of Oreos after work? How do I stop grabbing that glass of wine? When I say I promise myself I won't, I promise myself I won't, but I don't stop. I, I do it anyway. But that eating, as we've seen this week, and even if you haven't caught all of the other, or all of the other content this week, this is don't just chill guys you can understand this just in its own right yeah that eating is just the result of a whole chain of events and what i'm going to show you now is that chain of events as it's described by james clear in atomic habits love that book but this is an established piece of knowledge about you can find it in any of the the books that we've talked about tiny habits making habits breaking habits um, they all refer to this because it's it's established. So what you have is you have a cue and that will be um, it could be a time or a person or a place or feeling. You know, if you were eating, um, if you were smoking, a cue might be like, every time I have a glass of wine, I want a cigarette. Yeah. So it could be a, it could be that you're having to something else that cues it um, or um, as we've said in the past, it could be an emotional trigger. This week, people have talked so much about just feeling tired, that they do their habits when they just feel really, really tired. And I get that, absolutely, right? And then the craving is the wanting. In this case, the craving is the urge to eat, right? So you feel tired, you get the urge to eat. The response, oh, the response is that you eat and, um, the reward is, well, normally our habits are attached to things that have an inherent reward. This is a little mean in the brain and that, you know, food has its natural inbuilt innate rewards. But sometimes the reward is just relief, right? You've got to understand that if your emotional trigger is um, feeling tired, then perhaps also the reward is just distraction. It's just is just a slight relief. It's just not having to think the thoughts and feel the feelings that that you were slightly uncomfortable for you. And that's why we spent a bit of this week talking about buffering and how important it is to understand the urge to get relief from uncomfortable emotions. So mostly what you experience isn't that though. You don't experience this chain of events. You experience, I feel dreadful, and I want crisps. That's what you experience. Or maybe even after a while, like maybe you do that one day and the next day, all you experience is that your brain sends up that little message because it's so good at remembering these little shortcuts that it creates. Um, hey, you know, hey, Laura, yesterday at 4.30, you know, we had crisps. That was really rewarding. It's 4.30 again. Can we have them again? And you just you've taught your brain to be in expectation of the reward and that's why the habits become uh, an ever tightening loop and they're having more, happening more and more frequently and with greater and greater need to have more and more to get the reward because the expectation is there oh i know i i do that i get the reward i do that i get the reward and we keep going like that although most of the time with food what we're actually spending a lot of energy on is this part, the guilt and the regret and the promising yourself you'll start over tomorrow and do it differently tomorrow. So more and more, 
you're also experiencing the after effect. And as we've said, if you're experiencing a lot of emotional discomfort or that that whole thing can feed into a sort of vicious cycle of of guilt. So I feel worse. So I might as well be bad anyway. And that's exactly how overeating can turn into binge eating, as it did for me with some of that. How we normally tackle this is missing a link, really, because we try to avoid triggers and we try and feel like, well, you know, if I was on holiday, I'd be able to nix this habit, no problem. I'd be able to do this if if my world weren't so tiring, if I got more sleep, if I could if I could only get more sleep, but I can't get more sleep because I've got a toddler. I can't get more sleep because I've got to get up early to get everyone to daycare, to get them to work. And, and, and I think that we have to control our circumstances. We have to control the world in order to remember to eat, but it doesn't work really because you can't avoid having those triggering conversations with your mum or have a world where you can't have a bad day. We need to be able to, manage our habits come hell or high water really we can't just say well I was having a hard time and so I ate it makes us feel out of control it makes us feel like there's nothing we can do really and that solving it would be impossible but that's not true it's just an illusion it's just a way of thinking about it or the other thing that we do all of the time is to blame the food we're like oh my god that's it I just um, I just can't trust myself around crisps I'm just going to put them out of the house and that's it it makes you feel out of control when we give away our power like that yeah and and no wonder we feel out of control because we're blaming these other things for the habit happening and of course Coaching can help with some of this. Let, yeah, we could learn to process our emotions and adopt positive attitude to life events. Yesterday in the live, I talked a little bit about that feeling of tired and how the attitude that we bring to it can exacerbate that feeling of tired or it can make that feeling of tired doable. And so our thoughts can really help us deal with difficult life events and give us much more robustness in terms of coping. And then some people would regulate what you eat. But I work with people to give back all the responsibility to you for your food choices. I wanna teach you how to make decisions around food that work for you, where you like your choices. So I wouldn't be one of those people that recommended taking all of the junk food out and completely eliminating it. No, I wouldn't, I'm not saying, hey, let's just eat anything either. I'm just talking about giving you the skills to be able to make smart choices about your food. And that might include sometimes including those foods, because what happens if you remove them all the time is that one day you go to some kids party and there's a bunch of crisps on the table for the adults and you just go absolutely ham on them. And that, that just reinforces the idea that you can't behave yourself around those foods. Um, and that's, you know, that's the same in a way learning to be moderate about things is much harder than trying to stop doing the thing altogether but stop doing it just means uh willpower when you think about um new year's resolutions for example mostly what we do is we just get that stuff all out of the house and we just use our willpower solidly for for january to try and create that like detox or whatever it's not really sustainable though we need eating skills that we can do for the rest of our lives and we need to do things in the way that we want to keep doing them and what about all that guilt then well what about if we start to be curious about what we're doing like you are now right we start to investigate instead of punish ourselves for what's happening instead of feeling like we're bad people or broken or wrong for guilty or greedy or um, everyone else can do it and I can't, feeling like a lost cause, all of it. We don't have to feel any of that. We could just get interested, get curious. What is actually happening to me and my brain? All right, so there's a part of this process that we haven't really talked about and that's that we feel like it's that time of day and we eat, but actually there's that, the, remember, there's the craving, yeah? There's the time of day or the feeling of tired 
And then there's the urge to eat. You get the feeling and you start to think, hey, crisps would be good. Yeah. And right there, between having the urge to eat and eating is a window of opportunity because it feels like we do that automatically, right? We just have already put it in our mouth before we've had a thought about it. That's how we experience it. It's very fast. And of course it is with food because we've been putting food in our mouth since we were toddlers. So, you know, it, it's beyond second nature to put food into your mouth. But you can't actually put food, pick up something with your hands and put it in your mouth without involving your brain, without making a small decision about whether or not you're going to do that, right? That decision making right now is happening in your habit brain, in your lower brain. We can, uh, we can bring in our prefrontal cortex, our rational self, and make that decision with a lot more awareness. And I, when I coach you, I think this is where all the action is. Understanding urges and being able to make better decisions in that moment, to open up that window of decision making, make better decisions, giving you authority back over your urges. The real 